Hey everyone, Egwin here. Two questions. What do we use when we move our body? And what do we use when we think? Obviously to those two questions there are a couple of possible answers. But as long as we're talking about this direct relation of these questions with our human existence, there are two things that are always true. Whenever we move our brain and a substantial part of our mind is engaged. And whenever we think, a substantial part of our body is engaged in the thinking process. Why do I bring that up? Because development of our body is deeply intertwined with the development of our mind. And the two can't really be separate from each other. So no matter if we talk about development of the body or if we talk about development of the mind or personal development for that matter, it's always in either direction, a work that has to be done holistically. If we don't do it, we see the outcomes of that in our today modern society. People who only focus on training their body without also training or shaping the mind or being conscious about the changes that training the body brings in their minds, <clears throat> then what happens is simply that they become a completely different version of themselves, not just physically, but also mentally. Sometimes, depending on the, on the art they're practicing, they change in a way they never expected and they can't really grasp what happens. And that's something that ha doesn't has to be. This can be a conscious process. And as soon as it's a conscious process, as soon as you know what you're doing with a certain movement, as soon as that comes to mind, you actually will always know where you go, literally and figuratively, in terms of your personal development and in per terms of shaping or forming or training your body. And the same is true for the reverse, of course. Whenever you do something with our mind, just look at all the different ideas, all the different methods and systems that are out there to personal development, to mental training, to spiritual development, energetic methods and so on. They all train the mind and um, you've, I'm sure you've heard of that term that like someone doesn't seem to touch the ground anymore because like he or she is so much up there in his mind or her mind or in, in some strange or very high up dimension or something like that. Well. That also is a, a follow up. That's something that happens because sometimes in personal or spiritual development, the body gets forgotten. And this connection between the two, as long as we are in human form, in human shape, and we're talking in this relation, they shouldn't be separate and that's one of the most important aspects in my personal work as well yes i teach people anatomy and biomechanics for sure but as soon as the awareness grows i would never leave them hanging somewhere mid-air not explaining to them what's just happening and someone has to tell them it doesn't have to be me but 
to be conscious about a process is a centerpiece of everything that we can do. And the same goes for reverse. If I or anyone else teaches someone personal development or spiritual development or an energetic method or a healing method or anything like that, it's always important to always show, also show people how those methods connect down into what we call our material reality. Because otherwise, there's always a piece missing. And that's very important. I wanted to share that with you because that's a concept that is slowly getting more traction in our modern society, but is still widely disregarded. So yeah, definitely hope that you guys get some benefit out of that and have the opportunity to think about that a little bit, maybe implement that conscious idea in your own training, in your own, yeah, just be. Have a wonderful time. If you have any questions, just leave them and uh, tell me. And yeah, see you soon. Good night. Bye.